Hello, thank you for joining me. Behind me is the remains of Bridge North Castle. It looks as though it's going to fall over, but as it's been like that for the last few hundred years, I don't think we need to worry. We're here in Bridge North today in Shropshire for an episode of Minute Railway Britain, but the Minute Railway we're going to is actually in Worcestershire. Now, those of you who know of Bridge North probably know it's where the Seven Valley Railway is, and um, it's no coincidence that the Seven Valley Railway goes to Worcestershire and we're also going to go to Worcestershire on the Seven Valley Railway. So we're basically going to use the Seven Valley Railway to get us to the Miniature Railway, which we're going to visit. I just thought to start up here in the Castle Gardens in the morning. It's nice and quiet and um, it's a really nice place. So if you're going to come on the Seven Valley Railway to Bridge North, here's worth visiting. There's a funicular railway on the other side of town. Unfortunately, that's not running at the moment that's having some repair work done so i didn't feature that in today's video but i've just had to walk all the way up up the up the hill i would have otherwise come up on the cliff railway let's go over to this corner here i'm hoping behind this tree we should get quite a nice view down on bridge north station that's where we've got to go to to catch our train and then um yeah oh there through there that's bridge north station um, the depot and everything, the steam shed is just behind the station. I can, I can just sort of see the tops of some steam engines. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my way down there over the suspension bridge to Bridge North and we'll see what steam engines are there and then our train should arrive which will take us to Kidminster. So here we are at Bridge North, there's Standard Class 4, number 75069. I'm not going to go on that train, that's a, the 11.15 to Kidderminster. The reason I'm not going to catch that one is because that isn't a winning loco. I've travelled behind that one twice before. I'm expecting the Flying Pig to come in in a minute, and I'm going to travel on that one to Kidderminster so I get my winning loco. So I'm going to wait down here, I'm expecting the Flying Pig to arrive before the Standard Class 4 departs.
So here we are, we are on the train, ready for our journey to Kidderminster. Sat down in this rather nice compartment in a Mark 1 carriage, which is, always enjoy compartment travel. I wish they built trains today with compartment travels. See, I know you can't carry as many people, but it's just so much nicer. Our steam locomotive, the Flying Pig, has just gone on shed. If we look out there, you can see her there, taking on water. Interestingly, Omaha's here from the, um, she's one of the S160s. I've ridden behind her at the Churnit Valley Railway. She's number S160 2253. So she's built in America. She worked for Polish Railways and now she's over here. So that's quite a nice surprise to see her. There's also a saddle tank on shed as well. And um, there's no H Shunter and Hagley Hall just out of picture. Is that there? So we're gonna have a ride behind Flying Pig. I'm excited because it's a winning loco. She isn't really called Flying Pig, it's just a nickname that we're given to that class of steam loco. So she is sort of known by enthusiasts as the Flying Pig, but her real number is, or her number is 43106. So we're gonna ride behind 43106. I said, if you like Flying Pig, oh look, she's just about to be cold. You can just see a digger coming up with a coal. I'll let you watch that. Don't have that, they could do one of those big coaling towers like they used to have. Um, the only ones left now are at Carnforth. I'm just here, uh, getting cold. So she'll soon come off shed and she's going to take us for the run to Kidderminster. It's about an hour's run, so I'm going to enjoy that. And then when we get to Kidderminster, that's where the Coal Yard Miniature Railway is, which we've come here today to travel to. But why not make a trip on the steam train to get there? Here we are at Kidderminster, just arrived behind the flying pig. She's just uncoupled from the train. She'll run round, ready for the journey back to Bridgenorth, which I'm planning to travel on as far as highly, go and visit the Engine House Museum. But right now, we're going to go on the Miniature Railway, which we've come here today to have a ride on. If, if I ever do a Miniature Railway Britain video that involves a Heritage Railway, I'll nearly always time it around if I know there's a winning loco out, such as today. For those of you who don't know what winning loco is, it's a loco you've not travelled behind before. So as far as I'm aware, the Flying Pig is a winning loco for me. I've checked through all my notes. I can't see anywhere I've had it. If I have, it was at the dead of night once on one of their galas when they ran all night. I did do one of those um, because I, I didn't actually plan to. I came to the gala and then my clutch went so I couldn't go home. So I'd stay all night on the train. It was almost as if I'd planned it. Anyway, that's for the miniature railway. That's just round here. That's the railway museum, which I'm hoping to have a look in. And then the miniature railway is just down there and there's a warship locomotive. So let's go and have a ride on the miniature railway.
you over there? I enjoyed my trip on the coal yard miniature railway. I always like it when you get two different gauges of railway. So you've got standard gauge and seven and a quarter inch. I always like, you know, two railways of different sizes together. It just, just adds to the fun of railways in general. So we've had our ride up and down behind that, or in front and then behind that little warship, which is a nice local. There was a full size warship just up there at the diesel depot. So that was quite exciting. So I've seen two warships today. The plan is to go back on the standard gauge line. Obviously I've got to go back to Bridge North, but I'm going to go as far as highly. And I thought to add to this video, we'll do the Engine House Museum at highly because it just um, seems worth doing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the train from Kidderminster Town Station. And effectively you've got three railways because the miniature railway station was called Kidderminster Town High Level. That's Kidderminster Town. Over there behind that shed is Kidderminster Mainline Station. So you do sometimes see mainline trains over there passing um, the mainline on the mainline passing Seven Bay Railway. Anyway, I'm going to walk down there, perhaps get a cup of tea, and as I said, time to catch the flying pig as far as highly. So as the flying pig steams off towards Bridge North, you can clearly hear her climbing the bank. We're going to go have a look at the Engine House Museum. Good to see a Class 33 here. Always like Class 33s. The Engine House Museum is just over here, past the bridge. So this station here, as you can see, is only a platform on one side. Very attractive station. So generally the passenger trains don't stop here. Oh, no, sorry, they stop here. They don't pass here. So that also means gives me a chance to get up to the museum and then we'll be able to see another passenger train passing. There's a peak out today, a diesel locomotive. That's my other winning loco, which I'm hoping to catch back to Bridge North. It's interesting, it looks like here there's um, old cattle docks. That's where they'd have loaded cattle when they were taking them on the train in days gone by. Here our loco whistling away. Just want to show you a couple of things up here before we get to the museum. See the River Severn down there? After yesterday's rain, it's quite full. Not flooded yet. Obviously, we don't want any floods. Fortunately, this railway has suffered quite badly in the past, being close to the River Severn. Some other slightly more unusual items of rolling stock. Um, so that's a cherry picker on, on rails. Not sure if it is covered up. And then, looking a bit sad, there's a Perry People Mover. These, I think these are cool little things. If you ever go to Stourbridge, they run between Stourbridge and Stourbridge Town. They're great little vehicles. And I've never quite got how they work, but they're diesel, but they have a flywheel underneath. And they can run on the flywheel energy. So they're very environmentally friendly. So it's a shame to see this one here graffitied and with broken windows. Yeah, I know it's not exactly a heritage vehicle, but it's something unusual and unique. It just seems a shame it's been vandalised. Um, but yeah, that's sometimes what happens. So, let's just have a look at the Perry People Mover. It's 
Quite interestingly, the pair of people mover is currently sat on the line. No, it's just starting to rain. Good job, we're about to go inside. Just sat on the line that goes up here to the engine house. The engine house is a little bit like, um, well, it's a railway museum. That's exactly what it is. And it's where the Seven Valley Railway can put some of their out of ticket locomotives. So if a locomotive isn't in use, you know, it's waiting an overhaul, waiting its next boiler certificate, they can put them in here, which I think is a really good idea. And if you have a day Rover ticket, then that gets you admission into the engine house. So it's a perfect thing to do to bring your journey, especially, like I say, it's just started raining. So yeah, going for a walk probably isn't the best idea. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go, go inside, and we're gonna have a look around the engine house. I made my way straight up to the cafe to get a cup of tea before we look around the museum. The reason why is because there is a train due imminently to pass here. It will be the standard class four. So I can just see up there the signal is in the down position. It might The camera's probably not picking it out. So we're going to watch that go past and then we'll go downstairs and have a look around the museum. But because of the rain we've just had, there's no one else up here. So I'm the only person on this nice long balcony for watching trains who's actually going to watch the train. So here we are, we're just outside the museum. There's a little Morris Minor there, which is quite nice to see. It's a very interesting museum inside. Unfortunately, I can't actually walk around talking. The reason for that is they're playing music in there and I could get copyright striked. So I, unfortunately, I can't take that risk. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna do the next best thing. I've taken pictures of the Locos. And I also did a very interesting tour of a royal train carriage. So I'm going to put pictures of some of that in. So you can have a look at those, but unfortunately I can't actually walk around talking because like I say, uh, getting a copyright strike isn't something I want. If anyone from Seven Valley Railways watch it, if you ever want to, um, if, if ever you do have any days where you don't play the music, I'd quite happily come and have a look, look around without the music and I could do quite a nice little tour because there's a lot in there to see but anyway I hope you enjoy these few pictures and then what I'm going to do I'm going to wait for the peak the diesel loco to take us back to Bridge North. Here we are back at Bridge North. Been a great trip up and down the line. Had two winning locos. There were three trains out. I could have travelled on all three, but as I've had the standard class four twice, I just chose not to. What's quite a good little thing is you get this little map, and inside is an OS map of of the Seven Valley Railway, and it's really useful for sort of planning. You know, if, if you would say wanting to go for a walk or something, if I get the the map open, which is easier said than done when you're on the camera. As you can see inside, it marks the railway quite clearly, marks all the stations on the railway. Everywhere it says Seven Valley Railway, like that, that's a station. So this is quite a good little thing to have. We can see up there 
the peak. So what I thought we'll do, we'll finish the video with a shot of the peak departing. I'm pleased to get this peak for haulage. I said it was a, another winning low car. I think only once in my life before have I had a peak and I think that was at, um, well, the East Lancashire Railway. There's always a bit of a running joke. Sometimes people say, does anyone know which loco is working whichever train? And I always think it's funny to say 45015 because that's the peak at the battlefield line, which is a lot worse. It's probably never ever going to run again. Um, but yeah, this is here's, here's one in good condition of running. Pretty big loco. It's a quite beast of a loco, these peaks are. I think they're great. Um, they used to run on my local line, the Chilton line, on the rubbish trains, but that was, I don't actually remember them. I remember class 31s, 37s on the short line. And it's nice the way that we've started off with steam and today we've progressed on to diesel. So we're gonna watch this depart and then that will be the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the Seven Valley Railway for a great day. It's been really enjoyable. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.